Brian Ibarra. Is that Brian? Right there. All right. I know he doesn't have one because we've talked about it. It works out. All right. Well, now we've got Brother Adams to come on up. I know uh, one thing that we're going to do here toward the middle of the class is have a bunch of... Uh, open this up for audience questions so be thinking of questions write them down uh, we'll open up and we'd love to hear from you so brother adams come on up and let's dive into this how to develop land thank you uh brother hern and it's good to see all of your uh bright and smiley faces and everybody's awake everybody good all right we're going to go for round two tonight and i'm glad to be here and um, appreciate the invitation again give honor to bishop and pastor holmes and to herndon for uh, being so instrumental in these classes and um, I appreciate everyone being here. Week, I want to say it again. I feel like I'm probably the most unqualified person uh, in Little Rock tonight to teach this class, especially FPC. There uh, are so many that have uh, been in the land business for so many years, that have been very successful. And uh, they could tell you probably a whole lot more than I could tell you. But uh, I do count it an honor tonight. And we're going to have fun. Uh, we're going to have some group discussion tonight and a lot of feedback. If it's okay, we're just going to kind of freestyle this session tonight. Is that all right? If you have questions about down so you don't forget and hear and about I'm going to open up the floor, and we're going to have a discussion. And I think that that is a wonderful way to um, kind of cap off this two-week series. I said a little bit about it last week that back in 2005, I bought my first piece of property, my first lot, and uh, resold it, owner financed it, and slowly but surely got into the land business and it has been a very uh, big blessing to me and it has been a blessing to my family but most importantly in my little world it has been a blessing to the kingdom of God and to me that is greater than a new truck it's better than a nice home better than nice clothes and i own all of the above uh, i'm going to tell you something about the land business if you get into it and you're successful uh, you'll be blessed enough to where you can go buy you a gmc truck you can trade those fords and those and you can drive the best. That's how much God will bless you. Can I get a witness in the house tonight? I started preaching right in the middle of a class. So, um, anyway, it's a real deal. It really is. The land business is a real deal. I've went to a number of churches in the last few years and talked uh, about the land business and tried to show others how to get started. And uh, many of them have done that and taken the ball and run down the field with it. Um, others, they kind of look at me with wide eye, there's doubt, and very skeptical like this is some scam some pyramid scheme type deal that just there's just no way it's as good as you say it is now I know we don't have any of the doubters here because 
this is kind of the capital of the land business, at least in my mind, is so many people have done it, and uh, you have witnessed firsthand. Uh, all that this is you can do it. If you want to do it, you can do it, and you can go big with it. You can go really big with it. And as big as you want to dream in the land business, that's how far you'll go. And uh, I believe that especially the younger generation will grab a hold of these principles that's been around a long time. Uh, you will see for yourself uh, that it will be an incredible blessing to you, your family, and to the church. I can't remember if I told the story last week. I had it in my notes, but I don't think I got there uh, about... Uh, Jeff Bezos, is that how you say it? I think so. Always have a hard time with it. So, years, 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 years ago, he started in his garage. And he started with magazines and used books. And he started selling this stuff on what was called the Internet. Very few people had really heard about it. Most people didn't have it in their homes. And he had quite the operation going out of his garage. And a journalist come by and started talking to him one day, and they asked him, they said, why are you making such a big deal about these used books and these magazines? And he looked at that journalist, and he said these words, because I know it can be a whole lot bigger than this. It can be a whole lot bigger than this. And I think that can be applied to the land business. Um, it may seem small. You get one development, two developments, ten developments, twenty developments into it. And now you're living a comfortable life. But I want to hopefully stretch some people's imagination and vision tonight. And uh, maybe you'll walk out of this class with renewed uh, ambition and zeal to move forward at a very quick pace uh, when it comes to developing land and selling land using the owner finance model. And I truly believe that uh, business and entrepreneurship is for the apostolic. It's for us. I believe that with all of my heart. And I preach that and I teach that on a regular basis. And I believe that God's people would be well served if uh, they grab a hold of that and say, that's, that's what I want to be. I want to be an entrepreneur. I know it's not for everyone uh, but it's for a whole lot more than those that are doing it now. And uh, everybody can do it if you set your mind to do it. That being said, I think that we'll live to see the days of apostolic Pentecostal billionaires. Billionaires. It can be done. And I think that we'll live to see that. And... Um, I made mention also, I believe last week, maybe in the Acts class, um, that for the doubter that would be skeptical of that, um, the Catholic Church has reached a point to where they need no more money. The Mormon Church has recently reached the point that they said we have more money than we do needs. And it is because they've had people through the years and through the generations catch a hold of the vision of I can start a business and I can run with it and I can be successful. And they keep their church in mind when it comes to all of that. And so as we're moving forward and as we're striving to be successful, I beg you, and I'm not just saying this because I pastor a church, I beg you, don't forget about God. And don't forget about First Pentecostal Church of North River Rock. Be faithful to God in your giving. 
And I promise you that God will bless you for doing just that. Okay, so last week um, I tried to keep it really, really simple. And we started at point A and went all the way to point Z about how much land to look for, where to look for it, uh, how some of the steps of development. Um, we talked about how to make an offer in property, what contingencies to put on those offers, uh, how to get financing, different methods of financing. We talked about how to sell it, how to market it. Uh, we talked about uh, some computer programs that you needed to uh, download and um, we talked about the method of selling, and so we talked about several different things. Now, if I could borrow a handout from someone. Thank you. All right. We went ahead and printed these again from last week. Um, so we're going to pick up on page six. We talked about how to do it. Let's talk about the reward for a few minutes. Is that all right? All right. Mountain View Estates. Everybody there? Page number six. Mountain View Estates is a little 20-acre parcel that um, we purchased back, in, I think, in 2012. And... Um, it had just been hit by a tornado. Every tree was ripped to shreds. It had a little cabin that was thrown into a million different pieces all across the land. You couldn't drive up on the land because you'd be driving over two by fours and metal and nails. And it was the ugliest piece of property you've ever seen. And it was directly next to a Arkansas junkyard. The only thing worse than that was the guy that owned the junkyard didn't realize he owned a junkyard. <laughs> and um, I don't know, he probably had somewhere in the neighborhood, and I'm not exaggerating here, four to five hundred lawnmowers in his yard. Acres of lawnmowers. And he liked to work on lawnmowers. And then he'd get fed up with one, I guess he'd just stick it out in the yard and start on another one. So it was an eyesore. It wasn't the best piece of property by no means. Um, I looked at it. I was a little nervous about buying it. In that area, most of the land would sell for around 1,500 an acre for a larger piece, 20 acres or more. Um, but I was able, I think it was listed for around 1,200 an acre. I was able to buy it for $1,000 per acre which, again, keep in mind, that's 2012 in a very rural area. Um, paid $2,000 for the survey, borrowed a total of $22,000. Um, the bank loan, the percentage back then was 6.5%. I went ahead and just financed it on a five-year amortization, $430 per month. Over the entire loan, I was going to pay with interest $25,827. Now, when I first looked at the property, um, I thought to myself, I'm just going to get two 10-acre parcels, and I'm going to split it straight up. Here's the road down here, and I'm going to split it straight down the middle, and I'm going to sell it, and we're just going to see how that plays out. Now, the cabin was right here, used to be the cabin, so it still had a foundation there, and um, there was this old logging road, rutted out dirt road, and it comes up and it ends about down here, just a, almost a four-wheeler trail. Wasn't much to it at all. And so the longer I looked at that, I thought, you know what? What would happen if I got a guy out there with a bulldozer, which I think I hired him for $300 for half a day, $75 an hour was the going rate, and he leveled and smoothed that out. And then I paid, I think, about $600 for some gravel. And we just spread it up to about this point right here where the rest of these lots would meet. All of a sudden, I got four tracks out of that piece of property. 
Um, we sold it, those four tracks total, we sold them for uh, $90,000. We got $500 down. So we financed 88000 at 10% interest on a 15-year note. That project still to this day brings in $945 per month. If I don't get any of the tracks back, if I don't get any of the tracks back from here on out, the total profit on that project will be $144,000, $304,000, Okay, that's on a $20,000 bank loan. It's not my money, it's the bank's money. $20,000 to $144,000. That's real life figures. All right? I'm going to be transparent with some of these figures tonight. 40 acres, page 7. This is Dublin Acres. Back in uh, 17 or 18, I think it was, 2018 maybe. Uh, we paid 115000 land and the home. It was 40 acres. Um, $2,000 closing cost survey. We put a very small private road. It's about 600 foot. I really got a good deal on the road. It cost $5,000. Um, we paid a total of $122,000 on that project. 5.75 interest, 15 years. Our payment is just $1,000 a month. We sold these in 13 uh, three acre tracks at $25,000 per track. Got 500 down for the most part on most of these. Um, and so we, we were at, I believe, $365,000 total. Uh, brings in around $3,425 per month. So we take $122,000 investment with interest, the total payout on that would be, or total in, uh, accounts receivable on that would be $822,000. Again, that's with a bank loan. Total profit, $639,000. Now, you can see how this can snowball quickly and it can be huge we're talking about big money in a very short amount of time um, let me give you one more example this is a good easy development that anybody in this room could do with very little money if, if possibly no money down uh, I was just shy of 20 acres $40,000 for this is up north of Russellville, uh, twelve hundred dollars on a survey, um, and you see the figures there, around three hundred six dollars a month outgoing. Sold it in six tracks, hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars is what we got for it total, six thousand dollars worth of down payments. We sold them for a thousand dollars down, a ten percent interest, twenty year amortization that brings in thirteen hundred and eighty nine dollars per month. And so that would uh, profit, if we don't get any of the tracks back, this is worst case scenario, worst case, $298,432. That's real money. That's real life examples. And so um, it's doable for anybody. I think that one thing that we need to get on our minds is that we, do, we don't need to be limited to Romance and Rosebud and Cersei and BB and Malvern and Hot Springs and get farther out. Drive three and four and five hours one way if you need to. You don't have to be down there every week. If you've bought property in, in another state, you may go once or twice a year and let it do its thing. Everything you do almost is electronic. You send your offers electronically, um, you mail contracts, you collect money 
uh, via mail or via, uh, you know, just invoice them online. They pay it online. And so there's very little face-to-face -face interaction with your customers. Matter of fact, most of our customers I've never laid eyes on. I don't know what they look like other than a picture of their driver's license. And so uh, we're blessed in the age of technology to be able to do that. And so don't be afraid to venture out. Um, and I think that you'll find a whole lot of deals. Matter of fact, I almost bought a piece of real estate in Cincinnati or outside of Cincinnati, Ohio, a couple months ago. Someone told me about it. I actually went and looked at it. I didn't end up buying it. But I wasn't afraid to go 12, 14 hours, however long that would have been. Uh, because in my mind, I'll fly up there one time, put signs on it, and go back maybe once a year for half a day, jump on a plane, come back. What's a two, three hundred dollar plane ticket if I'm making three or four thousand a month off off that development, right? And so uh, think think big, think big. There is a land company. I think they're based out of maybe Chattanooga or Knoxville, Tennessee. That they do this all across the country. They have taken our same business model that probably started here at North Little Rock, and they have run with that thing. And they do they do uh, property all across the United States. There's another company. You'll see it pop up on social media as paid advertising sometimes that they buy property and they don't ever look at it sight unseen and they immediately put it back up for sale and it's the buyer's responsibility to get the survey to find the property <laughs> to locate it and i don't know if they buy it tax auctions you know so on and so forth i don't know how they do it and i'm not saying i'm comfortable with that method but they're doing it and it's huge they've got hundreds of hundreds of people Property. Then you go on the website, and you think, well, is this really working? And you'll find lots of properties, one after another, after another, that says sold, 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 pending, pending. And so people are buying it. And so get out of the Little Rock Metro, if need be, get out of Arkansas and venture out and go big. It can be a whole lot bigger than a one- or two-hour radio Little Rock. All right? Now, um, what we're going to do for the next couple minutes is we're going to look at some possible scenarios. Some of these are real life scenarios, and then some of these are fake scenarios. And we'll, I'm gonna, I want us to have some feedback tonight. All right? Let's go to slide number one. Here's 20 acres. All of these that we're about to look at, we're going to pretend like we don't want to build a road or put any utilities in so we can get in and out with little or no money. All right? So we're going to look at these. All of these scenarios are going to be we're not building a road. Or if we're going to build a road, it's going to be a very small one. All right? So 20 acres. Does this look like a good piece of property? Okay, I'm hearing no and I'm hearing yes. Where's my yes at? Where? Tell me why. Do we have a mic? Let's talk about pros and cons, and we're going to learn a whole lot by doing that. Because it has trees and you can sell the trees? Because it has trees and you can sell those trees. Okay, because it has trees and you can sell the trees. All right. Where's one of our no's? Let's hear both perspectives. Is this a good piece of property to subdivide and sell and own or finance? There's a road across the top. Have you 
utility, so it's fairly easy, right? Everybody hear that? Say that in the microphone if you don't mind. Oh. Yeah, uh, you got a road coming on top, and then you got uh, neighboring estates, which probably have utility. You can use those, put a road, and split it. All right, very good. So when you look at the property, it's going to be fairly easy to identify if there's utilities. Again, there's neighbors there. They're probably not living off grid. So we know at a very minimum there would be electricity, at least right here. Now we don't see any neighbors over here. We don't see any over here. We don't see any down here. So we'd want to verify that that electric line keeps running down, correct? If the electric line stops right here, but your property starts here, then that means you'd have to have an easement to get from here to here. So that could be a possible uh, obstacle that you've got to overcome. All right? Um, so you drive out and you look at it and you see, man, the electric line keeps going down. And maybe let's discover that there's a water line that goes down. You can look beside people's driveways and see if there's a water meter, typically. Um, and let's say that this does have water and electric. But let's just talk about the development side of it. Is this a good development to subdivide without putting a road? Yes. How many tracks could we get? Five, six, four. This is good. Seven. Two. So you could easily do two and do two 10 acre tracks, right? You could do four and do five acre tracks. Let's go to slide number two. Same property. There it is. Six tracks. A little over three acre tracks. And the only cost was the survey. This is that LaRue, LaRue Ridge Road that you had before you earlier that I don't remember. Um, I think we went over that. Yeah. So this one is uh, a $40,000 project that's a little over, um, uh, over a quarter million dollar profit. Okay, let's, let's do another one. Let's go to slide number three. This is 86 acres. You see in the yellow, there's a road. Talks about the road. You see Simmons Road comes in here. Now this is way out in the country. This is gravel roads, three or four miles down gravel roads. You've got Robertson Lane. It's a little private drive. It goes up here to one guy's house. Um, do you see any neighbors? You can see it's pretty rural, right? This property is actually located right outside of Magazine, Arkansas. You ever been to Mount Magazine? Um, I looked at it and I thought, it's got all of this road frontage. You remember, road frontage is money. Let them build the road, not, and, and so you don't have to worry about it. That's the ideal situation. So we have all of this road frontage but it's not going down the middle of the property, so what do we do with it? How many tracks could we get there? It's 86 acres, keep that in mind, 86 acres. Without building a road, 24. Subdivide that in your mind real quick. You technically could probably get two tracks here, is that right? Um, this is 10 acres, roughly. You could get two tracks there, correct? Um, all right. Uh, 
you could get some tracks off this road. And then you could come up and you could start subdividing here. These would obviously have to be big tracks though, right? They're going to be really deep. You're not building a road. You're coming off this existing road. Let's go to slide number Slide number four, 13. The magic number was 11 for me. Now, you see the creek we were contending with. Here's one thing that you may keep in mind is a creek can really make a deal sweet or it can kill it depending where it's where it is. If this creek ran across parallel to the road, would that be good or bad? Bad. Why is that bad? So everybody's got to cross it with their driveway. Who wants to build a bridge? Brother Corey Townley wants to build a bridge. And he'll build yours too. Uh, and so this track had it going down the edge. So that's great because they can put their house right here and have a creek for the kids to play on back here. And so it just wound in. So I always try to make the big tracks at least 300 foot wide. And I try to make the smaller tracks at least 200 foot wide. All right, like three or five acre tracks, you want a minimum of 200 feet. And so uh, I almost backed out of this deal after I had it under contract because I got nervous because it was so far out. It was like 20 minutes from a Dollar General. And it was down gravel roads. And I thought to myself, I don't know if anybody would want to buy it all the way out here. All right. Um, What made me go ahead and go with it is I didn't have to build a road. And uh, there was electricity available. There was not city water at this road, so these people have to be on wells. But I thought if I can make my formula work, at least double my money, then it's worth doing. So we purchased this for roughly $1,500 an acre. I knew in my mind I can get $3,000 an acre, maybe more, right? Anybody would pay $15,000 for five acres, especially owner financed. So I don't have any risk involved. Why not go ahead and do it? Plus, I start driving down this road, and about over a half mile, you'd see a little trailer or a house. So somebody wants to live out here. And so um, we went ahead and bought it. Every track sold in two weeks. And I have gotten, for whatever reason, I've gotten very few back out there. Just two or three, I think, through the years. And as soon as, matter of fact, I've got two coming back. These two are coming back this week. And uh, there's two or three people that's called the last couple months. If you ever get anything back out there, please call us. We want it. You know, so it'll be sold the day that it's finalized. And so it's, it's, a, uh, it's a good deal. It's a good deal. All right, let's go to uh, slide number five. Hey, Brother Adams, let me interrupt one yeah. time. Uh, for those that are, if you don't have the paper, and we have a large crowd that's listening on Holy Ghost Radio, so you can actually access the, the papers that we're looking at, go to our website, fpcnlr.com slash resources. Uh, so if you lose your paper for those locally, you can always go back, fpc.com, fpcnlr.com slash resources. You can see exactly what we're looking at right now. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Okay, let's go to page, uh, slide five. You know what, we'll work off this. Okay, this was that Dublin Acres that we showed you earlier. Um, do you have slide five? And I'm sorry, I labeled them, but I may have forgot that one. Okay, yeah. 
Thompson Bay Road and Dublin Road. We have this sitting on the corner. You had a older double wide little shop, very, very pretty property. I mean, you just look at it, it was very, very pretty. All this was pasture, uh, this was wooded. Uh, city water up both roads, electricity up both roads, and again, road frontage is worth money. And so, um, at first, we thought, well, we won't have to build a road at all. We ended up building a small little road, uh, just cleared out some trees and put a private road to access three tracks in the back. And let's go back to that, that other slide that was just up. And there it is. Does that help everybody visualize? And so, again, make sure that you down, download mapright.com, mapright.com, uh, the app, and uh, sign up for, on the website. Uh, you can sign up for a trial version at first. Eventually, you'll have to pay every month, and you can lay out properties, and you can just play with it uh, until you get sick of doing it. And you can measure it down to the foot. It's, it's incredible what the program will do. It'll tell you where the creeks are. It'll tell you where the utilities are in, uh, in some states. It'll tell you who the utility companies are, school districts, city limits, what's in a floodplain, what's not. It'll tell you what kind of soil's under that. It'll tell you everything. And so uh, you can actually weed out a lot of deals that you looked at online. You think, man, that looks like a good deal. But how do I know it's a good deal? I don't really want to drive three hours one way and look at something and just turn around and come right back out and waste my time. Look at it on map right first and make sure it's not in a floodplain. Make sure it doesn't fall straight off a, a cliff. And uh, you can tell how level it is, where the dips and valleys, all of that on map right. Um, let's look at the next one. All right, everybody see this one? This one's 30 acres. We've got 483 foot of road frontage. It goes, it's long and narrow, 2,700 feet. Is that a good one to develop? No. There's two reasons there. What are the two reasons? So we got chicken houses, everybody. <laughs> Notice that? Has anybody ever lived next to a chicken house? You may get used to it. I don't know. They say if you live next to train tracks, you get used to it. I don't know how you get used to that. Now, if it was shaped differently and you could get a good enough deal, I'd probably still bite it off even though it was next to chicken houses because you'll find someone who doesn't mind. Okay, uh, but what really kills this deal, it's only got 483 foot of road frontage. So how many tracks can you get out of that one? How many? Two? Two? One, maybe two? I would say this one is, is it's, you can't subdivide this one. I mean, you may could, but you're, you're at 241 and a half feet wide if you do that, and you're 20, you're half a mile deep. Okay, so you're, it, it's, it, it'd be quite the, it'd be quite the sight, okay? And so, there's a lot of properties that'll come available, but they may look like a good deal, but you need to look at that road frontage, and you need to look and see how feasible it is uh, to subdivide that. Now, if this road was here, but this road curved around and hit the tip of this over here, all of a sudden you're in a completely different situation. Because then you could probably subdivide maybe some 10-acre tracks and one larger track, and as long as you could buy it right and would be within your formula of at least doubling your money out the gate, then you'd be good to go. Okay, let's let's look at one more. This one's 21 acres. It does have road frontage. Always make sure it has road frontage. 
Don't buy property that's accessible only by easement. It should be very few and far between if you do that. Does anybody know why? Now think about this. Let's say this road's not here, but this is, and there's an easement to get to this. And you think in your mind, man, if I can just get back there, and I have a legal easement, if I can get to this point, then I can build me a road, and I can have several tracks. It'll be super simple. Well, the guy that's given this property an easement, he's not going to be a very good neighbor. It'd be one thing if he knows he's got one person crossing his property to get to it every day. But to have 10 people crossing his property every day, that's not going to be a good deal. Okay? And there can be all kinds of legal issues. You may end up winning in court, but it's not worth it. Okay? And so always make sure it has road frontage. So we have road frontage here. Is this a good one? Let's draw a scenario. Let's say that this property is priced at $2,000 an acre. And let's say this property is in Heber Springs. Would that be a good price? Be a very good price. Okay, how many tracks can we get out of this? One? Two? Everybody think we can get two? No. Okay, so we can easily get two by just coming straight off this road and coming straight back. And then we'd have two ten and a half acre tracks. Um, we possibly could make this like a little bootleg here and come down straight across and have four or five acres over here. They just it wouldn't be an easement, but it would be a you know they'd have a thirty foot driveway or something. So you could probably do a track there, um, and then but if you do that, you're taking some of your road frontage away and giving it to this guy. And then you might could get, so at the most, I would say that would be halfway feasible, at least, maybe three. It would be easy to get two tracks. But what you got to look at in these situations is, can I make the formula work? If I'm paying $2,000 an acre, I need to sell it for how much? $4,000 an acre at, at the minimum. I personally like to triple or two and a half times, but as if you can double, it's worth doing. So if you're selling 10 acres for 4,000 acre, that's $40,000. Their payment would be roughly $400 a month. Can they make that payment? They could probably make that. It's a little high on a payment, but it's, it's doable. Um, so you see a situation like this, it may not look very good initially, but you can still make it work, go for it. And so, what are we going to make our offer contingent upon? Number one, financing. Number two, access to utilities to suit buyers' needs. And then number three, uh, soil analysis tests. Let's make sure that it will perk. You're not, get, you're not actually getting the perk test, but you're just verifying, most times just verbally with a soil analysis company that it will perk, all right? And by uh, doing that, you kind of cover some of your bases there. So if the financing for some reason didn't work out, utilities wasn't what you hoped for, or soil analysis, it didn't pass, then you can back out. You've not lost any earnest money, and you are uh, good to go. All right. We have taken some time tonight, and I think we have time for maybe two, one or two questions. Brother Mike Holmes.
in these situations, are you doing the legwork, you're out there riding and you find this, or do you have a realtor that you work with in a certain area and he feeds you these kind of, this information, I got 40 acre tracks or? A little bit of everything. At this point, I think the longer you do it, the more you get connected with some realtors. And I do have a few realtors that call occasionally and say, hey, I got this deal fixing to hit the market today just in case you'd be interested. And so that doesn't happen real often for whatever reason. Uh, it just doesn't. But um, most of the time I find out on Zillow. Zillow's my go-to. Now, the bad thing about Zillow is versus like Realtor.com. Um, in my opinion, this is my opinion, Zillow is a whole lot more user-friendly. Um, and, but not all listings are on Zillow. And realtors hate Zillow. And so they're fighting it. And the realtor boards and so on and so forth, they are fighting Zillow. They hate Zillow. And so um, Zillow is probably going to lose the battle at the end of the day. But um, so Realtor.com may give you more information. So you may, you may decide you like that better. And if so, that would probably be good. But just my personal preference, Zillow, that's where I find most of my property. Brother Kim Bourne. So if this piece of property is in Heber Springs where property is more valuable, why wouldn't you consider putting a road in it to get more tracks to drive the price up since smaller tracks sell for more money? And again, if you've got the money to do that or you can borrow the money and uh, all the figures will play out, then I say go for it. You now it's just like, okay, Am I going to spend an extra $20,000 on the road to, okay, let's just break it down. 10 acre tracks for 4,000 an acre. If they were three acre tracks, what are you gonna get? 6,000? I don't know. We're just, these are hypotheticals here. 6,000, maybe more. In Heber, it's probably more. Uh, at six thousand an acre, so you just you just increased your overall selling price by forty two thousand dollars by putting the road in. How much does the road cost to go back to the middle? And so, if the road costs you twenty thousand dollars, are you also going to run city water? And so then you may have another 10 grand. So you just invested 30 to make $10,000 profit. Again, you want to at least double your money. And so that's, that's just me. Now, some of these other land guys and, and sisters, that they, they may would disagree and say, you know, I think you need to go for it. That's just how I look at it. And so if I'm going to build a road, it better be worth it. It better be worth it because uh, you're going to have, it's going to come up through the years. Who's maintaining this road? I got potholes in the road, so on and forth. That's the beauty of developing property that has road frontage. You never have to worry about it. You never have to worry about it. All right, do we have time? No, we're out of time. God bless you guys very, very much. Thank you for coming tonight. Brother Hunter. Hey.